Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my Infinite Game Score series, and today we're going to be going over Cyberpunk 2077. So here we are guys, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, this is going to be my unlimited game score review of it. Uh, I'll go ahead and preface this video by saying that I played the original pen and paper role playing game that 2077 is based on. So this means I have some expectations and bias, but I kind of hope to keep that in check. I started playing Cyberpunk 2077 in August of 2021, so that will tell you how patched the game is at the time of this review. I started on, what is it, 1.2 and finished my first character shortly after 1.3 was released. Uh, finished, maybe retired is a better word, who knows. That's right, folks. This game has replay value for me. The multiple character builds are a great way to change the combat, pace, and difficulty of the game. Want to wield nothing but a katana? Okay. What about hacking the entire city and never pulling a trigger? Yep, you can do that too. You can even do a non-lethal build. I have no idea why you would do that, but you can. It's all up to you. However, that's not all of it. Your choices during dialogue play a role in your journey too. Spare a life, take a bribe, rescue an enemy, all of it shapes the road that you're traveling. Visually, this game is everything I expected after it finishes loading. The combat is great and outside of explosions, is fair. Uh, I don't think the explosions in the game are very fair. Uh, it just seems a little unbalanced. I like the perk system and how it's a tip of the hat to the old pen and paper game. However, some perks are, well, grossly overpowered. I'm looking at you, Jackpot. While others are laughably underpowered. <coughs> <coughs> Transmigration. <coughs> and, you know what? I think most players have figured this out by now. The story is a beautiful tragedy that fits well into cyberpunk. And while this game has flaws and technical issues, I do think it's worth playing. Try to look past and forgive its shortcomings. I will admit that Red Engine 4 feels rough and almost unfinished. Honestly, if CDPR had used the Decima engine, I think things would have gone a lot better for the game. And yes, I know Sony owns Decima and it would have locked the game as a Sony exclusive. But enough about what might have been. Let's see the score. Like every other game on the planet, it was created and tells a good story and is worth purchasing, so it starts with a score of three. Uh, it's available both physically and digitally, so it gains a point there. Uh, immersion. I think this game was very immersive. Uh, I was very, very happy with how everything went, except for a couple of the crashes and stuff, uh, so it gets a three. Multiple endings. Um, man. This game does have multiple endings, uh, and they are all bleak, gritty, and realistic. Uh, there is no happily ever after here. To quote Johnny, wrong people, wrong city. This holds true to the source material, and Night City is, well, a meat grinder that will chew you up and spit you out. So, it gains two points there. Uh, let's see, voice actors, it gains a point. Game length, two points. Um, I think it could have been a little bit longer on the main story. Uh, that felt a little bit short if you try to rush it. Uh, story, two points. Level design, 
met my expectations, two points. Play balance, one point. Um, I mean, there is some play balance there. Uh, let's see, complete experience, three points. Sense of progression, three points. It's a really good leveling system. And, you know, when you're getting better weapons and better armor and better skills and stuff like that, you, you can definitely feel it. Fairness punishing RNG, three points. Um, like I said, the, the only thing that really got me was the explosions and how someone could blow up a car next to you and that just instantly kills you. That's, that's a little bit upsetting. But still, the rest of the fairness is definitely three points. Technical difficulties. Oh boy. So I had, what was it, five crashes, three times I fell through the world, a bunch of pop-in textures, the load times were really bad. The cyber eye scan didn't work. Sometimes the sound cut off in the game. I had two quests permanently glitch so that I couldn't solve them or resolve them on my first play through the game. But honestly, there's only so much you can like count off for uh, before it becomes redundant. So it only loses three points. Game value to MSRP cost. One point. I'm, I'm sorry, this game just was not polished enough to justify the $59.99. I picked it up for $10. Choice and consequence, one point. There is definitely a lot of choice and consequence, but I don't know if we really shaped the story too much except for a few choices at the end. Multiple storylines, one point. A lot of the a lot of the side quest stuff are really good and, and definitely worth doing. Do not rush through the storyline. Uh, try to try to naturally progress through. It feels a lot better that way. Soundtrack two points. Visuals two points. Difficulty two points. Gameplay slash combat three points. I really liked the combat. Although there could have been some improvements with a couple of things like the monofilament whip um, where you could just walk up and sneak attack people. That would have been nice. Um, but other than that, yeah, definitely three points. Controls, two points. Replay value, three points. Yeah, this game has tons of replay value. Just for the multiple endings alone. And then you put on top of that the multiple different builds that you can do and have where if you want to be a crit monster or if you want to engineer everything in the game and be a gadgeteer if you want to hack the world you can do it it's it's awesome camera two points unlockable slash rewards one point sense of accomplishment two points i really enjoyed this game despite all of its flaws and i know guys it's going to continue to crash the joke is, is that Cyberpunk 2077, every, every every hour or two, decides that it's going to crash, and that's it. Just it gently reminding you to take a break for a little minute. The total score on this game is going to be 45 points. Uh, it's a really good high score in spite of all of its flaws. I really do hope that they continue to patch this game and fix things, because... It's worth playing, guys. Uh, I, I had a lovely time playing this game. And I would suggest that you go out and pick up a copy, especially if you can find it for 10 bucks. So I finally got my hands on a PlayStation 5. And you know I had to put Cyberpunk on it. This changed the entire experience, and I can say with confidence that Cyberpunk should only be played on a ninth generation console. I should know, I have 600 hours under my belt. While not all of the technical issues are gone, in 1.5, crashing every 20 to 30 hours instead of crashing every 2 hours is a vast improvement. Thus, the 9th generation version of the game gains some points back in the technical difficulty category making the final score for Cyberpunk 2077 on the PlayStation 5 47 points.
And that's it. The end of Cyberpunk 2077 and the end of Night City. I spent a lot of time on this game and I don't regret it. I hope this review helps others discover the game and that all of the negativity surrounding the launch can be resolved if you play on ninth generation systems. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Cyberpunk 2077? Have you played it on a ninth generation system? Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.